Hi, hi, welcome back to part two of energy conservation uh, strategies for activities of daily living. Today we're going to go outside the house. So the other day we talked about things and ways to save your energy and protect yourself while you're in the house, pacing yourself, planning ahead. And now we're going to talk about how to do those things when you leave the house. Uh, so again, my name is Jessica and I'm one of the exercise physiologists with the program. And I look forward to talking and sharing with you today. Here we go. So we're going to talk about working out in the yard first. So just like the other day, we talked about using a wheeled cart around the house, like a utility cart, or using a wheeled laundry basket or something to put your supplies in and help you move about. You'd want to do the same thing outside. So using a wheelbarrow or a garden cart on wheels, which they make all sorts of different ones, are great ways to do that. We actually don't have a wheelbarrow. We have one of the little red wagons still, and we use that as our wheelbarrow transporting stuff. Uh, sit and kneel or kneel down to work in the flower beds. So if you're weeding or you're planting new flowers, you can sit or kneel. They make wheeling stools nowadays. They make knee pads for you to kneel on. So it's a lot more comfortable on your knees and easier on your body. Use raised flower beds or potted plants so that you don't have to get down so low on the ground. Um, they make raised flower beds now even as high as four feet tall. So you're reaching at chest height right at that waist level so that you can work in those flower beds just as conveniently and still be able to do the things that you enjoy. Gather your tools uh, before you start a text. Just like when you're cooking, you want to get all your stuff together. Do the same thing out in the yard. So if you know you're getting ready to go plant flowers, make sure you have your flowers, your seeds, your potting soil, that tool, the trowels, the gloves, everything together so that when you go to plant it, you're not walking back and forth to the garage or the shed. Use a cool wrap around your neck or your forehead so that you're able to stay cool outside, especially during the summer months. It's really important that you don't get overheated because getting overheated just exacerbates everything that you're feeling, increasing that fatigue and increasing the shortness of breath. Make sure you get plenty of cool water or cool drinks when you are extra, when you are working outside. Uh, that does not include alcohol, gentlemen. I'm sorry, no beer for you. Um, because it is actually exacerbates it. Uh, so drinking cool water, uh, then go inside the cool off. So if you notice that you're starting to get a little bit warm and you're starting to feel a little, eh, not, not quite the same, go inside the cool off. Uh, same thing, if it's cold out, go inside to warm up. Um, and in that case, make sure you're dressed appropriately as well. Uh, stay inside during the hottest part of the day. So avoid going outside when the sun's at its most intense, which is usually between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. After that, the start, sun starts getting a little bit lower in the sky, so it's a little bit more tolerable. Um, the other thing is going out early in the morning or late in the evening, so before the sun really gets high in the sky and as it's starting to get lower in the sky are going to be your best times of the day to get outside and work. Um, use a self-propelled lawnmower, so a riding lawnmower, or even better, hire somebody, is one of the best things we ever did, um, and it's well worth the money to us. Uh, one, it gives us more time with our kids, and I don't have to stress over it. So for me, that is a huge benefit of having that there. Mulch your lawn um, to decrease the need for mowing and raking. So mulching your lawn is a self-mulching mower. So your mower basically will just continue to rotate and chop that grass until it gets into smaller bits and then it just goes right back into the lawn so you don't have to you don't have to pull it up, you don't have to bag it or anything like that. So when we lived out in the country, this was something I was able to do. Uh, and it was a lot more convenient than once we moved here and we had to bag everything and pick it all up. Um, wear clear, light colored clothes, something that's breathable just like you would do if you were exercising. Always make sure you wear a hat to protect your face, your ears, and your neck from the sun. Um, the lighter colored clothing are going to reflect the sunlight so that it doesn't hop down and get in there and so it's not quite as intense. And then use a sprinkler instead of holding the hose. So instead of standing out there watering your lawn like this back and forth, use a sprinkler so that it's going to protect it and it'll still continue to go. You will have to move the sprinkler, which is my husband's least favorite thing to do. I am not very good at it. I tend to get soaking wet every single time. So, But using a sprinkler is a lot more convenient and easier on your body. All right, so now we are going to the store, which is ooh, so much fun these days. Um, but take your time when you shop. Uh, shop when you're rested. 
not when you're tired. So if you know you got a lot of things to do that day, that's not your best day to go shopping. Um, save some, save it for another day. If you have a handicap parking tag, use it uh, on a bad breathing day. So that way, if you need it, you're parking a little bit close to the store. But for the most part, as your EP, I'm telling you to park farther out in the parking lot so that you get your steps in because that's more important. But if you're having a bad day, uh, definitely use the closer parking spaces. Shop at stores that you're familiar with. Uh, how many of you get really annoyed when they rearrange your grocery store? Because you get used to it and then you don't know where anything is and you're back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So shopping in stores that you're familiar with is very important. Um, use a handy pack. They are coming back in style uh, for hands-free shopping. So that way, or convenience, or a cross-body bag to carry your purse or everything like that. So that way your hands are free to get packages down and move stuff around. Right. Use an electric cart to get groceries. I hate telling you guys to do this. And if I ever see any of you out there with one, you better be having a bad breathing day or something better be hurting because otherwise I want to walk in. But please do get a cart um, of some sort so that you're able to push that because having that to push uh, the cart to push is going to be a lot easier on you than trying to carry the basket or something else, especially if you are hooked up to oxygen. Put your oxygen concentrator or your e-tank into the basket and push it around the store. Um, makes it a lot easier on you, a lot of less weight to carry. Uh, my grandmother, used when we used to go shopping with her, would always get the buggy and we would offer to push it and she would just shoo us away. No, 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 I got it, I got it. I didn't get it at the time. But now I do after studying and learning a little bit more. She was using it for support. She was using it like a walker. It helped her be able to stand up straighter. It helped her to push and lean against that as she got tired as we went through the store. It wasn't necessarily the weight of the basket she was worried about. She just wanted something to help prop her up. So ask for help to uh, reach the higher groceries or something on the lower shelf. My kids love to help people pick stuff up off the lower shelves. They think they are so cool. And so kids absolutely love that. And it's okay. And then at least once when my husband and I go to the store, somebody asks one of us to get something down off the top shelf. It doesn't bother us. We really don't mind helping. So please ask. It's, it's easier for you. And most people don't mind helping at all. Get assistance with loading your car. Lowe's Food is awesome about doing that. They always offer it. And I know we're getting a Publix here soon. They also offer it. And it's free. No tipping um, for them to carry their groceries out to the car. And it's okay to help. And now they have drive-up service. You order your groceries online. You drive up and they put them in your car for you. What could be easier? So that's always an option too. And then always remember that when you lift anything, you want to lift with your legs and not your arms or your back. So you want to use those legs to pick things up off the ground and keep the legs strong. All right, how many of you have grandkids or kids of your own still um, that you're having to care for? So use strollers. They are a godsend. I will be honest with you. Uh, we use our stroller all the time. I have a three-year-old. He still gets in the stroller when we go running or walking sometimes. When we go to a big amusement park or anything, both kids go in the stroller still because then I don't have to worry about them running. Uh, use a front or backpack carrier to help your arms from fatiguing. You can also do the same thing with the diaper bag. If the kids aren't in the stroller, put the diaper bag in the stroller. We use that all the time. Um, so the diaper bag, and a lot of times the strollers come with a basket underneath. So you can put the diaper bag down there. If you're playing with your grandkids, sit on the sofa or sit down on the floor. Nobody said you had to necessarily chase them all around and everything. Let them entertain you. My kids love to put on a show. They even put on a show for my mom and dad via FaceTime. So they love doing shows and you can just sit and enjoy. Uh, have your child stand on a footstool when you're doing their hair or helping them get dressed. Then you're not having to reach down quite as low. Both my kids are now tall enough to reach the sink. I still have a footstool in front of the sink for both of them. So that's one, it's easier for them and it's easier for me to do their hair, make sure they're dressed and everything like that. They're at a higher level. All right, work at the office. Keep your office area cool. You don't want it to be too warm in there because then it gets stuffy feeling. Use a fan if you can't really control the temperature in there uh, so that the air continues to circulate and it feels comfortable. Keep 
Again, here's that key. Keep the items you use most often nearby. Everything should be within an arm's reach of those things that you're going to use the most. So this telephone, the computer, the keyboard, um, the stapler, your pens, whatever you're going to use should be within reach. Use a stool on wheels or your chair on wheels so that you can roll a short distance if you need to go ask somebody a question. You can pick up a telephone and call them to ask them a question or send them a quick email. Uh, use of rolling cart again. We like that rolling cart to carry your supplies rather than using your arms. Uh, and when you're in the gym, you notice we have a rolling cart in front of the scale. There's a reason for that. We use it a lot to move stuff around. And then make sure you're avoiding heavy lifting as, as usual. So proper body mechanics for sitting. Making sure you want to sit with your back straight. Um, and I can adjust this down. So back is straight. You're sitting up, your feet are flat on the floor. You sit close to your workspace so that everything's within arm's reach. Your elbows should be down and at your side. They should be out, they shouldn't be up, so your shoulders are relaxed. Um, maintain good posture. Your feet should be on the floor, and if they're not, you want to get a little foot pad so that you can rest your feet on that or lower your seat. Uh, maintain a good posture when you're driving too. A lot of times you see those people driving with the sway back and leaning out, they're gonna have a hurt. You're going to end up hurting. Um, use cruise control if you're driving long distances so you're not having to sit with that leg fully extended. You can also, if you have some lower back pain, you can use a small pillow or towel and stick it back there behind your back in that lumbar area so that your back is properly supported in the car as well or at work. All right, so this was one of my favorites, um, talking about proper mechanics for standing. So don't wear high-heeled shoes. Don't wear hard-heeled um, shoes or platform shoes uh, for long periods of time. Keep your knees relaxed, your muscles tight. Don't arch your back too much. When your knees are straight, you're going to cause yourself to pass out. If you're overarching your back, you're going to get fatigued a lot hard, uh, sooner. So there are some different ones here. So the first one we're going to look at here is sway back. So that is actually when the anterior pelvis, which is right here, is tilted forward and their shoulders are back so they're kind of standing at like a little bit of an angle then you have lumbar load rosis which is another anterior tilt to the pelvis so you can see here his hips are actually rotated forward a little bit his butt tends to stick out and the chest is pushed forward um, this is one that we tend to see the thoracic kyphosis um, and you might have heard of kyphosis before this is what we tend to see as we get a little bit older. Um, and what you can see here is the thoracic spine, which is right in this section, is starting to curve forward. And so that's from that hunch position. When we sit and we're comfortable in this, we tend to hunch forward. The shoulders come forward, they arch forward. And so that whole back starts to hold that position. And a lot of times it's from muscles being tight in the chest and too relaxed in the back and not strong enough. So that is why every day when we exercise and we stretch, we wanna make sure you do those shoulder rolls back and open everything up. And Amanda is really good about exercising and stretching you guys open by having you reach back and you reach up and about both sides so that you are getting that opening exercise to loosen the muscles in the chest area and you're not quite as hunched. Then you have the forward head tilt which is this next one here um, and you can see this is also called tex neck we're seeing this more and more and more from everybody leaning over and texting in their phones like this and they've got their shoulders up the head is forward and a lot of times this will cause neck pain which is you're seeing where the, this arrow is pointing right here um, and so that head is forward and so a lot of times chiropractors will work on this is having you make sure that you keep your ears and your shoulders in the same line. Chin should be parallel to the floor when you're sitting up comfortably. Your shoulders are back and that back is straight so that you're keeping everything there. And then this last picture here, um, he is in a nice straight posture. So again, like we were just talking about ears, let's see ears, shoulders, hips, knees and ankles are all in a straight line so holding that nice good posture there is very important and it will make you feel better too if you're standing up straight but again remember not to lock your knees so you never want to lock your knees
All right, change positions often. So if you are seated for a while, you want to just kind of move around a little bit so that you don't get in that same position um, and your leg muscles and body parts don't go to sleep. So if you're a fidgeter, you do this anyways um, So because you can't sit still. So I tend to tap my foot. I tend to tap my foot, my knees, I bounce. I don't sit still very well. Avoid twisting when you're lifting stuff. So you don't want to pick it up and lift with the twist. You want to pick it up and then turn to move it. Uh, remember, again, like we just mentioned earlier, you want to lift with your legs and not your back or your arms. So avoid carrying an object in a bent over position as well. So once you carry it, make sure you're upright and have it lean against your body so that you can support that weight. Um, so take home messages for today or take your time. Uh, just like everything we have mentioned with the energy conservation, plan ahead. So knowing what your plan is going to be for the day, sit down, take that time to make that plan. Sit to rest. If you need a rest break, don't be intimidated by it. It's okay. Sit and rest and get there. Use a pull cart. So having that utility cart or a wheeled cart of some sort is very helpful. And then the things that you use the most, keep out uh, and keep it in a convenient location so that you can get to it whenever you need it. All right, thank you for listening and have a wonderful day.